What's up guys, welcome to The Factory Financial. My name is JD Newells and on this channel we focus on three things, uh, personal finances, real estate investment, and uh, stock market. Uh, the name of the game is financial independence. Hopefully pretty soon I'll be able to quit my nine to five or seven to three in my case and achieve complete uh, financial independence. So in today's video, I will be talking about why am I bullish on the Rio Can and actually uh, Canadian real estate in general. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so first thing first, I want to concentrate on a video or on an interview that Ed Sunshine did. He's the CEO of Rio Can. He did about almost a year ago, just before Rona hit the streets and messed everything up. So he was explaining the position of the Rio Can, and I want you to listen carefully to what he's saying because most of my theory or thesis is based uh, on his vision and where he wants to go, where he wants to take the company. So let's hear what he has to say. CEO at Rio Can for insight of the company's strategy and their latest quarter. We've been fortunate. Uh, I mean, you know what? Uh, with, with, there's an old joke, a man plans and God laughs. Uh, but uh, actually God's been smiling uh, because not only is the real estate market really excellent, uh, particularly where the bulk of our uh, assets are, which is right here in the GTA. Okay, so the first point that Ed is making is that uh, Ontario real estate has been lately on fire, uh, especially Toronto, which is uh, second, first or second when it comes to the real estate boom in Canada. I think it's always between Vancouver and Toronto. Uh, but also uh, interest rates, uh, you know, those are, uh, are just way lower than I would have expected at this point in the last decade and, uh, and see no, uh, you know, there's no signs of them going back up again. So. And here's the second very, very important key, which I'll explain in a uh, in few seconds, but the interest rates are low and he's surprised by those things. Uh, so it's pretty much everybody, but the low interest rates favor real estate. So let's continue with the video. Everything is actually working out uh, the way we'd like to see it. Uh, we disposed uh, in the last two years of 10 million square feet of retail. Uh, outside of the major markets. And the third point that he was making that they just uh, disposed, to use his language or his words, uh, 10 million square feet of retail outside of the major markets, which is Toronto. And uh, we've been busy uh, acquiring and building within those major markets, particularly the GTA. Can you seize on the opportunity fast enough? I mean, an apartment doesn't go up overnight. I have been to different sites in this city that were holes in the ground three years ago, and I meet up with the developers. How's that going? We're just getting out of the ground. It takes it takes some time. Yeah, that 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 big factor, and we'll see it. We're we're going to be starting this spring a building on Yorkville. Interesting enough, where I think uh, you know we're going down about uh, two or three stories. The biggest example is the well, the old Globe Mail head office where we went down eight stories because we're putting in this giant water tank for N-Wave because uh, it's all going to be very sustainable uh, energy use there. Um, but the, uh, the fact is it takes as long to dig down and then you got to go up again and it is a large part of the building. But the typical high rise today, uh, 50 stories plus, uh, which is Toronto scale now, um, it takes three to three and a half years to build and it probably takes three years to start if, if you're on zone to get to the point where you can actually put that shovel on the ground so it's a long process we're very fortunate uh, that we started over five years ago on okay so what you saw in the video with uh, Ed Sunshine is that he was uh, outlining few important details number one interest rates very low uh, which is very important for real estate. Number two, they were in a market, which is GTA, and they got rid of 10,000 or 10 million square feet of the retail outside of the GTA. And then uh, it's very important because they're focusing on their uh, mixed zone urban thing that they're doing, which is bottom part commercial and upper is residential. So they're doing... Uh, I think it's like 13 or 19 I forgot exactly how many projects they're having right now but the mixed zone in they were pivoting right so five years ago they started this process as he was saying it takes about three years to 
develop everything to get all the permits and everything in order and then another three to four years uh, in order to build so it takes about six seven years for building to go from the project uh, on a paper to an actual building and they started about five years ago so they're well positioned for upcoming um, residential need in, in especially in Ontario because if we look if we look at the plans for um, a liberal government of Canada to bring, uh, when it comes to the immigration, to bring for well, about a one percent of the population every year for next three years, which is 2021, 400,000, um, 2022 will be 411, and 2023 will be 421,000 newcomers to Canada. Which, uh, if we know that most of the newcomers, they choose two destinations. One is uh, destinations. Uh, one is Vancouver, and the second one is GTA. So now we know that uh, most of the com newcomers will be focusing coming on Toronto, which will increase uh, need for residential uh, uh, apartment buildings in Toronto GTA area. So we have a massive immigration coming into the Canada and when you add that to already existing hot markets like Toronto where one million dollar gets you a shack pretty much these days, um, the real estate cannot really go anywhere but up even though like even right now you would think like one million dollar home in Toronto is an insane price but when you add more by 2046 we are Ontario is supposed to double or not double well the low projection or medium projection is about 31 percent or almost 5 million new people living in uh, Ontario or and uh, if you go at the high growth rate which is 7 million uh, that's a lot of people and Toronto is going to be a hot hot market for uh, upcoming time okay so this covers the point one that there's a huge demand upcoming there's a large population Toronto is a booming city GTA is a booming area and Rio can pivot it towards the residential and they got rid of the unnecessary commercial which uh, they cashed in chips on so good time very good time okay so let's switch to another point point number two which is very important for real estate and that's uh, interest rate as you can see that a Canadian or a Bank of Canada interest rate is 25 basis point or points or 0.25 percent and if we take into the consideration that in 2020 government of Canada <laughs> spent some serious serious money and we are first time in a long time I don't think uh, it's been ever breached but one trillion dollar deficit uh, is there so Canada owes more than one trillion dollars this is the first time I think in the history I'll have to double check on that but I'm pretty sure first time and that's not it the government is not planning to stop they're actually planning to spend another hundred billion dollars on top of the uh, already existing deficit so why is this important this is very important because if uh, government is spending money they're borrowing and spending money that means the interest rate will remain very low for foreseeable future which works out beautiful for Rio can and their development okay so we covered very key important things uh, to me that I see uh, the reasons why I should be bullish or why I am bullish for Rio can and that's a long-term demand long-term uh, low interest rates which will which will help uh, Rio can in the long run uh, to fund those projects and make them cheaper which is gonna bring more revenue to the company now, however if we look for a short term there might be some pain there might be some volatility because some of those uh, uh, their tenants like uh, good life or, or uh, EB games I don't know how long they're gonna be in a business especially EB games some of them might go out of the business and when you add those up it comes almost to the 20% of the of the occupancy for those in my opinion questionable so I don't know they uh, they might get a loan from a government they might rebound the uh, Rio can might do something I don't know but in the short term, this might be painful and we might see stock drop down a little bit further. Uh, in the long term, like I said, uh, I'm 100% bullish. And as you can tell right here, as you can see, uh, this is my real estate portfolio. It's $1,400, almost $1,450. And the real estate uh, is bulk. Like majority of my investment is real estate. Uh, number one is Plaza Reed and number two is Rio Can. And I'm planning in a f little further while, like as much as I can, as long as Rio Can is down, just to heavily invest into the Rio Can. 
and Smart Center Real Estate. Uh, I believe in this company and in the long term, I think uh, even if it goes back to to what it was previously before Rona hit the street. So what was like twenty six, twenty seven dollar per, per share. And uh, so you get some of the some of the growth over there. Now it's eighteen dollars. So you're looking almost like ten bucks per share in a in a in a growth and still monthly dividend. I know that Rio can cut their dividend. But their dividend was slashed from twelve cents to to uh, eight cents. And uh, right now, currently, if you look at the Refinitiv, they have a moderate buy. Uh, so yeah, I, they even they cut they cut, uh, which was kind of funny though because for a long time, uh, Sun or uh, Ed Sunshine was saying like, "Oh, we are fine, we are fine, we are good, we don't need to cut the dividend." And the 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 price of the Rio can was the, the share was uh, still the same, like nothing was happening, nothing was happening. And I think the Ed Sunshine said to himself probably, "Hey." Uh, the whole industry is uh, expecting me to cut the dividend, so I uh, might as well just do it right now and just let them think that they're right. And in the meantime, position myself with the cash. So once the Rona is over, that I can even spend more and even like maybe some other uh, infrastructure products, uh, projects they have to fast forward those, maybe spend a little bit more money, get them faster to the market. All right, so this is my uh long-term view and this is why i'm bullish on this company uh do your own due diligence research your company uh don't just believe some guy on the internet like i am uh do your thing and uh if you want to see my whole portfolio just click right here uh one of these pop things is gonna pop out and uh thank you for watching see you in the next video